Let's do some equations of lines in point slope form. Point slope. And this is different from y or from slope intercept form from slope intercept form, but they really are just two different ways of writing the same equation. We're also, we'll see that with a couple of examples. And you might remember that slope intercept form were equations of the lines of the form y is equal to mx plus b. We did this in the last video where m is the slope, b is the intercept, the y intercept. That's why it's called slope intercept. You have the slope and the intercept. In point slope form, it takes the form y is equal to, or y minus y1, and I'll tell you what y1 is in a second, is equal to m times x minus x1, where the coordinate x1, y1 is a point on the line. That's why this is called point slope form. Now, these are just two different ways of writing the exact same thing. You can always algebraically manipulate this to get that, or algebraically manipulate that to get that. And I'll show you that with a couple of examples. But let's just do a few in point slope form just to make things concrete in your head. So here we have a line that has a slope of negative 1 over 10. So m is equal to negative 1 over 10. And it goes through the point 10, 2. So we can directly go to point slope form. The point slope form here, so let's get a point. A point here is the point 10, 2. So we can immediately go to point slope form. y minus, this is a y value that's on the line. So y minus 2 is going to be equal to uh, the slope negative 1 over 10 times x minus an x value, times x minus 10. Just like that, and we're done. We just put it in point slope form. And there's two things I want to point out to you why this makes, one, why this makes sense. And I also want to show you that this is equivalent to that. So the first thing is, why does this make sense? Well, all this is saying, if you divide both sides of this equation by that right over there, you get y2 over x minus 10 is equal to negative 1 over 10. Or you get the change in y between any point and 2, and the point 2, and any and the change over the change in x. So you get the change in y over the change in x for any point x, y on that line relative to the point 10, 2 is going to be negative 1 over 10. This is just the definition of your slope. Hopefully I don't confuse you there. I'm just showing you that this is just using the definition of the slope to create the equation of the line. Now, the other thing I want to show you is that this is completely equivalent to this. We can just algebraically manipulate this to get that. And let's do that. So this right here is the answer to the problem. But let's play around with it algebraically to get it in that form. So if we get y minus 2 is equal to, let's distribute the negative 1 over 10. So it's negative 1 over 10x. And the negative 1 over 10 times negative 10 is plus 1. Now we can add 2 to both sides of this equation. And you get y is equal to negative 1 over 10x plus 3. So just algebraically manipulating it, we were able to put it into slope-intercept form. So these two things are completely equivalent. Let's do a couple of more problems. The line contains the points 10, 12, and 5, 25. So let's figure out the slope. So the slope, which is equal to change in y over change in x, is equal to, well, let's just use this point first. So let's say it's 12 minus 25, 12 minus 25 over, over 10, over 10 minus 5 over 10 minus 5. And this is going to be equal to 12 minus 25 is negative 13 over 10 minus 5, which is 5. So the slope here is negative 13 over 5. Let's put it in a slope, point slope form, the equation. So it's going to be y minus, let's use this point right here, y minus 25 is equal to the slope, negative 13 over 5, times x minus this point, 5. We just knew that the point 5, 
comma 25 is on the line. So y minus 25 is equal to the slope, which we figured out, times x minus 5. And we're done. That's all. And if you want, out of interest, you could do the algebra to put this into the slope intercept form, into the mx plus b form, and see that they are completely equivalent. Let's do another one. So they gave us our slope. It's 3 fifths. And the y-intercept is negative 3. So here, immediately, this would be very easy to put it in the slope-intercept form. In slope-intercept form, slope-intercept intercept form, the equation of this line is y is equal to the slope, 3 fifths x, plus the y-intercept, minus 3. And we'd be done. But how do you put this into y-intercept, into point-slope form? So how do you do this into point-slope? Point slope. Well, we know the slope. We know that m is equal to 3 fifths. We know m is equal to 3 fifths. But do we know any points on this line? You need a point and a slope to immediately put into point slope form. Well, we know one point. We know the y intercept. The y intercept is negative 3. That means when x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 3. So our point is the point 0. Negative 3. You could have try, tried to figure out other points. You could have said, oh, when x is equal to 5, y is equal to 0. There's all sorts of things you could have uh, tried out, but this one was just sitting there for us. The y-intercept is negative 3. That means that the point 0 minus 3 is on the line. So let's write it in point-slope form. y minus this y value, so y minus negative 3 is equal to the slope 3 fifths times x minus this x value, this x coordinate, x minus 0. Or, if, and this is point slope form. We could, this could be y plus 3 is equal to 3 fifths times, we could write times x minus 0. If you wanted to be, you know, you really wanted it to make it look like point slope form, this would be point slope form, but it's kind of silly to write x minus 0. So you could just write y plus 3 is equal to 3 fifths x. You know, it's not 100% clear that you're in point slope form yet right now, but I think it's silly to write x minus 0. And obviously, to go from here to there, you just have to subtract both sides, subtract 3 from both sides, and you'll get that. So these are almost equivalent. I mean, they are equivalent in terms of what they represent. They're even almost equivalent in how you write them. You just have to subtract 3 from both sides of this equation to get to that one. Let's do another one. Let's put this in point slope form. So these, they're giving us information when x, so they're giving it in the form of x, f of x. right? So in this situation, when x is negative 7, f of x is equal to 5. And this coordinate, they're telling us when x is equal to 3, f of x is equal to negative 4. So just like that, we can figure out the slope first. So the slope which is equal to change in x over change in or sorry change in y over change in x. So let's do this. It's negative 4 minus 5 over over 3 minus negative 7. And this is going to be equal to negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. And then 3 minus negative 7, that's the same thing as 3 plus 7, that's 10. So slope is negative 9 tenths. And so to put this in point slope form is really easy. Point slope form. Point slope form is just going to be y, let's do it this way, y minus, I'll color code it, 3 is equal to, I'll do this in the, back to the green color, is equal to the slope is equal to negative 9 over 10 times x minus this x minus this coordinate x minus negative 4 and then we can close it so this is in point slope form we obviously can simplify this negative a little bit and we could rewrite it as y minus 3 is equal to negative 9 tenths times x plus 4 and we are done